What is up and welcome to the climax of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Behind us you can see the Spear Pillar, where gods are born, and the ultimate enemy of this game, Chibi Cyrus, awaits. I am so excited to see how this cutscene will play out, especially with the art style of this game, the very interesting choice of character models that they've gone with. And I know a lot of people mention the fact that they were cheapy back in the original Diamond and Pearl, but I just feel like they look so much cuter and bigger headed in this game that it's just going to look hilarious. So if you guys are excited, make sure to smash that like button for some legendary action. And of course, before we take on the legendaries themselves, we have got to take down the Galactic Commanders, Mars and Jupiter. At least I think I finally got their names right. Oh man, there he is! The boss, Cyrus, entering Zen mode once again. Now, all will end, and everything will begin. With this red chain, I will pry open the portal to another dimension. I command that you unleash your power for me, Dialga, the mythical Pokemon and the master of time. So yes, this is Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, of course, but I will be showing off what this cutscene looks like in Shining Pearl version immediately afterwards, because of course you will face an entirely different legendary, and I want to see exactly how that plays out, the little differences that we might notice. But of course, here in Brilliant Diamond, we've got the Steel Dragon Dialga, the master of time, unleashing that rainbow energy into the sky. This will bring about the destruction of all things. With everything gone, there will be no fighting and no strife. Can you feel time distorting? Only I can choose to stop it. I gave a little too much emotion to Cyrus there. I know that's like his whole character is that apparently he has no emotion for anyone or anything, including his own Pokemon. This is the mythical Pokemon that created Sinnoh. Okay, you got an exclamation mark. That's a little too much emotion there, Cyrus. Dialga, the ancient deity of time! <laughs> this world cannot be molded into the ultimate world I seek. It's far easier to create an entirely new world than to change this one. A new world in which I am the ruler of all things. I shall become a deity! I can't help but think he just looks so goofy with his little hand stretched out. Oh, okay, he put him back down. But man, that was pretty intense, I'm not gonna lie. If it wasn't for little tiny Cyrus there, like the Dialga itself appearing before us and those rings of darkness spreading throughout the whole Spear Pillar right now is pretty dang epic. So let's see exactly how this plays out over in Shining Pearl. Now all will end and everything will begin, the red chain will open the new dimension and Palkia, the master of space and dimensions, shall appear. So yeah, all that was basically the same, but of course, the legendary Pokemon that appears will be quite different, as we have the purple circle! Oh, it's so menacing! Or is that the Eye of Sauron? What the heck? I didn't make that connection before, but there it is! Palkia, the water dragon, master of space, and it will indeed create quite some space with that big old rainbow. So I believe what Cyrus actually says is pretty much the same, except you feel the dimensions distorting now, and only I can stop it. This is the mythical Pokemon that created Sinnoh. What? I thought it was Dialga, the ancient deity of space and dimensions, Palkia! I'll let you guys appreciate the music a little bit more this time around by staying quiet, because it is quite epic. But of course, the dialogue will pretty much remain the same. And now it's time to face off against the Galactic Commanders. Of course, the battles themselves will be the same regardless of what version you're playing. I don't think they have any different Pokemon on their teams or anything. So let's start with Mars. No need to rush. I can understand you want to battle our boss real bad, but she'll have to go through me first. After all, you've made me look bad more times than I can remember. And I'll be next. You might be tough, but this time, the gloves are coming off. You don't even got gloves on. What are you talking about? 
Hold on one second. Don't you start the party without me. Hey, it's butt. <laughs> well, if it isn't the little boy who ran off crying at Lake Acuity. Did you get any tougher since then? We'll beat you two on two. Yeah, surprise tag battle with Barry. I mean, but our partner in rivalry. Uh, that didn't really make much sense. But yes, our rival but is partnering up with us this time to take on the Galactic Commanders. Two on two. And this dude's got a Munchlax now. Okay, I mean, not exactly the strongest Pokemon, but I like the little variety that he's got going on his team there. And I'm sure eventually that'll become an insanely powerful Snorlax that can just sit on any Pokemon and win the battle immediately. <laughs> Uh-oh, here comes the payback. That's going straight for Yukina, but Bronzor doesn't exactly have the strongest of physical attack or any attack in general. It's definitely more of a defensive Pokemon, as uh, Butt will actually finish the job there. I like that. Munchlax is so slow that it strikes even after the payback. But speaking of payback, Barry is the one looking for payback right now against Jupiter. Since, of course, we learned that apparently he got his ass beat by her in Lake Acuity, which uh, I am a little bit surprised by. You know, I've kind of been roasting Barry for not evolving his Pokemon throughout the whole playthrough, but I don't know. I feel like he could still take on these Galactic Commanders. Yukina is not looking too hot right now, though. Tanking a critical hit there. And Butt will finish off that little Bronzor with a bite. But yeah, we definitely need to get our Frostlass the heck on out of here before she faints. That would not be great. Ooh, but a Golbat is coming. Obviously, we can Ice Fang that thing, but Skuntank is going to be faster. So no, we should definitely get the heck on out of here. And maybe bring out Travolta, our signature Electivire. Look at that ball capsule. I actually updated almost all of my ball capsules for my team members. So now we got some electric fire going on for Electivire. Since of course it does carry that flamethrower. That's like our only fire move on the team. And what did I say earlier, dude? Munchlax straight up just sits on the enemy. That's hilarious. <laughs> I didn't expect it to literally happen, but uh, we're gonna go for the discharge, which of course hits everybody on the field, including Barry's little Munchlax, so I do feel a little bit bad, but I mean, he's able to tank it up just fine. Oh, the poison gas. That's not good. Ooh, there we go. The poisoning coming through for both of our Pokemon. Dude, Barry's Munchlax barely took damage from our discharge. Like, we definitely got to keep going for it. Although now there's only Skuntank out here, so we don't really need to discharge all over everyone. We could instead just focus our Thunderbolt straight onto the skunk tank and try to take it out uh, but i believe mars still has her signature pokemon yet to come and yep there it is the Pur ugly who's been eating a couple too many berries as we've learned uh she always has that citrus berry on her or him i didn't actually pay attention oh yeah it is a female Pur ugly and there it is that citrus berry but one thing i'd never noticed before as Pur ugly came out into battle it actually like the little tail wraps around its chest i'll probably show a slow-mo animation so you guys know exactly what i'm talking about because it's a little bit confusing but it actually went for dig and obviously it's going to target travolta so we're not gonna let that happen instead let's switch on over to our haunch crow who does also have air cutter and that can hit both pokemon on the enemy side but at least save little munchlax from any pain hey there it is and also that uh, just, just ignore that, okay? <laughs> My homies sure seem to like playing games recently. I think in a previous episode, I also saw a little message pop up. Someone was playing Mario Kart or I don't know what game, but, uh, I hope you have fun playing whatever it is that you're playing. I'm enjoying myself beating up these Galactic Commanders eventually. Oh, no! Per Ugly is gonna win the Battle of the Heavyweights, even though that's what Munchlax is known for. Yeah, sure. Uh, Perugly is heavier than Munchlax, I suppose. Sitting right on it will knock it out. But at least we get the revenge for Butt there with our air cutter. As Skuntank goes for the belch. Jeez, what the frick? Critical hit. I was not expecting that damage to come out right there. Okay, I mean, you know what? Let's go for Bonsai. I'm expecting Barry to maybe go for his Star Raptor next, or at least I really hope he does. Yo, the coordination, let's go. 
Of course, Star Raptor's flying type, so it does not get hit by Earthquake, and that is exactly what we're gonna go for. Except Bonsai is really slow, so Barry might just finish Skuntank here. Yeah, with the close combat. We don't even get that chance to make the Earth shake. But it's okay. Yo, oh, the aftermath, okay. I don't know why I expected that to do a lot more damage. But yeah, I think that should be it. Unless Jupiter still has one more Pokemon up her sleeve. And it looks like she does. Otherwise, the battle would have just ended right there. Oh, she's got a Golbat of her own. Come on, like... No one wants to fight a Golbat right now. Especially because uh, Bonsai doesn't exactly have the highest power. Like, it's definitely more of a defensive Pokemon. Or at least mine specifically has a nature that lowers its attack. It's not the best, so yeah, we're not going to do that much damage. We at least avoid the Air Cutter, though, thanks to the power of friendship. And uh, Star Raptor just dodges it, too. But that's mainly because it used Double Team the turn before. And now with the Pluck and Crunch combo, we're gonna knock that Golbat right out of the air and knock these two Galactic Commanders into the Stratosphere one last time. I couldn't help but say it again, as Pachi's learning Screech. Uh, don't really need that. They're done for! Sheesh! I should have done the fighting myself! Dang, finally one of these Pokemon trainers is ready to throw some hands, like... The actual trainer is mano a mano instead of the Pokemon. <laughs> You've toughened up, but you're no match for our boss. We'll see about that, Fantina's cousin. <laughs> My Pokemon are tough, right? I can get even tougher. But you know, that's it for us. We've hit the wall. Let me help you with this. Oh, okay. He healed up our Pokemon. Very nice. This is it. It's your show now. What, you're not even going to help me against Cyrus? What the heck? Man just ran away! Oh, it's getting intense up in Spear Pillar! Yo, Chibi Cyrus, what you doing? Dialga, this is... Uh-oh. This is intense is what it is. The sound effects, the graphics, yes! Fantastic, beautiful! Exactly what I was thinking. It's the creation of a new galaxy, my new world! <laughs> This looks so goofy though. What? The music change. You know things ain't going to plan now. We got Yuxi. We got Mesprit. And my favorite, Azulf. The Triangle of Sinnoh. The beings of will, emotion, and courage combine to free Dialga from the Red Chains! Cyrus is quaking right now. Just imagine being face to face with a pissed off legendary. Oh yeah, that's about the same face I would be making. What's up with you though? Oh, I guess Mesprit felt a little something special towards us there. The Red Chain? It crumbled away to nothing? But why? Why would Mesprit, the Pokemon of Lake Verity, appear by your side? Oh, never mind that. It's all destroyed. My galaxy's gone. I won't allow this. I will capture those three again and craft another red chain. But before I even think about that, I'm going to completely crush you. Whoa, my goodness. How can you be so cute? but so menacing. I just love how he had his fist clenched up like Arthur in that one meme too. But here it is, our final battle against Team Galactic's boss, Cyrus. You know things are serious when he starts showing that much emotion. Cause his whole gimmick throughout the whole story, or not really gimmick, but his personality is that he is emotionless. He's kind of like a sociopath if you think about it. At least I think that's what sociopathic is. Oh my goodness. Okay. The critical hit too. This Hodgecrow's got the super luck strats on Pat. And Frostlass will get one shot. That's not good. Uh, that's exactly what might happen against a certain dragon Pokemon in the league later on. What? This dude's got a full restore too. Bro, I'm more curious what happened since like... The last episode, we literally battled Cyrus, but he had none of these Pokemon. 
well, that's kind of spoilers, but obviously he had a little Murkrow, not Honchkrow just yet. It's only been like an hour, and this dude went Super Saiyan on us. Maybe he hit the Hyperbolic Chamber, I don't know. But Cyrus is also going to have a Gyarados, which I don't believe he had before either. But thankfully that is something that Travolta can definitely take. Or maybe not, because it's got the Weakening Berry. Or the berry that weakens our electric move, but we still almost just barely don't one-shot it there. Yeah, you can see the Wakan berry weakens the power of- Oh my goodness, you've got Earthquake! Okay, that definitely hurt, but thankfully Travolta lives. And now, we're gonna go for a Super Potion? I went for Discharge, but I mean, it's not like that Super Potion is really gonna heal you by that much. So, Discharge it is! What an awesome animation. And once that Wakan Berry is used once, you can't use it again, of course. So this time, fully electrically charged, no weakening our power. The Gyarados goes down, and it looks like we've got a Weebile coming out next. Now, we could have low kicked it, but of course, uh, that does more damage the heavier the Pokemon is, or the enemy. So I would rather give Pachi a little shot at the spotlight here. It is our highest level team member. I don't know how this happened, dude. Cranidos was chilling in the PC for like most of the playthrough and oh no. This is not good. Weavile goes for Dig and we all know how this ended back in the Snow Point City gym. We got one shot, but Pachi is definitely more tanky so we can eat that up and now rock slide it down for the one shot. Hell yeah, good stuff Pachi, I like that. Weavile is down, and this is why we went for Frostlast instead. So we could get one shot by Night Slash. <laughs> but yeah, his final Pokemon will be Crobat, and you know what? You might as well stay in. You got this, Pachi. I admit, you've pushed me to this extreme. Yeah, Cyrus has been a lot more emotional than I expected during this whole battle, which might just explain why this man has a Crobat all of a sudden. Like, he talked all this trash about how he doesn't actually care for his Pokemon, he's just using them for their power, and like, he can't build bonds, he has no emotion, but Crobat is literally a Pokemon that only evolves if you give it happiness, if you max out your friendship with it. So how was it possible that he got that? I don't know. Maybe Crobat just relates, it's just as emotionless as Cyrus, so in solitude or solemnness they relate. I won't accept this, the power spoken of in mythology. I didn't just make it obey me, I made it my own! And that's what's called denial. What is truly the ultimate to you? What do you consider perfection? The most important thing, what shines the brightest, telling you is meaningless. But I will not give up, I will become a deity one day, and I will make the ultimate mine! I will say, overall, I like the ending of Cyrus's story a lot more in Pokemon Platinum. I feel like here he just disappears and you don't really get a resolution. The Master of Time! It's impossible to tell if it is enraged or saddened. But to me, Dialga appears to be waiting for you, Orange. It seems to be challenging you. Go on, face up to Dialga, listen to its heart, understand its thoughts. Dialga is out of control after being dragged out by the Red Shade and forced to use its power. Dialga seems to be trusting you to stop it. What? Little old me? Are you kidding? I ran into Butt a little while ago. Oh, that's nice. He said that he believed in you. He said that you could get the job done. I feel the same way. Please help that Pokemon. It's suffering from being dragged out by Team Galactic. Okay, okay. As usual, the fate of the world. No, the universe rests on the shoulders of this cyberpunk kid. So we will go ahead and save the game just in case because we definitely want to try to catch this Dialga and I don't even think our Pokemon are healed up. Oh yeah, good thing we checked because we are far from ready to take on this legendary. Now I recommend having a Pokemon with either Thunder Wave or Hypnosis so you can put this thing to sleep or paralyze it. That will obviously make it way easier to catch, but unfortunately I don't think I have any moves that do that. Unless we happen to get a lucky one with Travolta, who I believe can paralyze with either Thunderbolt or Discharge, so 
I guess that's who we're going to be leading the charge with against Dialga, the Steel and Dragon Legendary of Time. <laughs> I can't help but wanting to read that sound phonetically. It just looks so funny. But there ain't nothing funny about this battle scene and the music too. This is real intense, dude. Holy moly. Look at that glitching out in the background. It looks so crazy. And at least the Thunderbolt will not be very effective, so we can get quite a lot of them off in the hopes that one of them eventually paralyze it. Oh god. Okay, actually, that's not very effective. So yeah, Travolta can also tank up a couple hits from Dialga. And uh, we just gotta pray that we get a paralysis in. Okay, here comes the ancient power. I feel like that might hurt a little more. Never mind. Dude, look at how the background keeps glitching out. That looks so awesome. Like every once in a while, you see it kind of tweaking or glitching. It looks so cool. Another flash cannon. Yeah, we should definitely heal up now because I don't want to Travolta to go down here and then we won't be able to get the paralysis at all. But that's three Thunderbolts down and I don't think we can afford too many more. Oh God, the roar of time. Why did you wait this long to do that? Holy moly. Almost one shots us there, but Travolta lives. We're okay, guys. We're just gonna hyper potion up once again, and uh, this will be fine because Dialga actually has to recharge now. And speaking of charge, I think I'm gonna actually go for the discharge because we haven't gotten lucky with the Thunderbolt paralyzing so far. And oh, no way, dude! It was destiny. We actually got the paralysis on the last chance that we had. Because, of course, one more discharge would have knocked this Dialga out. And I've been saving a very special ball for this very Pokemon. And no, I'm not talking about the Master Ball. I'm talking, of course, about our Lucky 13 Premier Balls. I don't know why I've always had this thing where I want to catch all of my legendary Pokemon or any special Pokemon in general in a Premier Ball. And so that's exactly what we're going to do with this Dialga who's going to absolutely wipe out Travolta, finally knocking us out. Uh, so I should note, you actually have the option of either catching or knocking out this legendary, but I mean, there's no reason not to catch it, honestly. Like, it's a legendary, dude. I'm sure everybody wants it, even if they're not gonna end up using it on their team. You gotta catch yourself the cover legendary. And I like to do it in a Premier Ball, at least in the games that let you. Of course, their catch rate isn't exactly the highest, in fact it's the same as a regular Pokeball, so this might take a while. Another thing I should mention is you can actually shiny hunt these legendaries, so if you want to save right before fighting Dialga or Palkia, you can then keep reloading the game and potentially get a shiny, if you can catch it that is. Oh god, it got all the stat raises from the ancient power there. That's definitely not bueno, because it'll be able to one-shot basically the rest of all of our team members. Well, we'll find out here with this Flash Cannon, which is going to knock out Bonsai. Not our starter, dude. Oh, no. All right. Uh, let's go for Toko up next. I don't think Toko can tank up that much damage. I mean, one roar of time at this point with the special attack raises will probably destroy us in one hit, but... I have a good feeling about this, never mind. Another good option against these legendaries are timer balls, and not just because it's the legendary of time or the god of time or whatever Dialga is, uh, but because timer balls actually work better the more turns that pass. And after 10 turns have passed in a battle, it is four times the catch rate of a regular Pokeball. And oh my god, I thought that was it, dude. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind if we catch it in a timer ball, actually, because it is kind of fitting. Like, the Pokemon of time gets caught in a timer ball. Just barely didn't work out there. Got me sweating right now. Uh, we still do have a couple more Premier Balls, though. It's Roar of Time can one-shot Travolta, too. So that's definitely not good. I got two Premier Balls left. Let's just hope that Travolta can tank at least one hit from whatever it goes for. No, I thought that was going to be it. Oh, the paralysis, though. Okay, this is it, guys. Final Premier Ball. I'm getting on my knees. Oh, please. Why? Why did it have to be like this? 
Well, I mean, we got another paralysis, so, uh, you know, uh, I guess we get another chance with the timer ball now. Oh, mighty gods of Sinnoh, please bless this premiere ball. Okay, if that was actually a premiere ball, it might have worked, but pretty sure we just get one shot by this now. Oh, wait, it's not very effective. How could I have forgotten? No, 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 we do not want to hit it right now. Uh, I wish I saved another premiere ball, or I don't know. I have this weird theory that if you switch up your poke oh my- What? How did you miss that? What the heck? We're getting way too many chances right now with Travolta. This is kind of crazy that we've survived this many turns. But finally, it'll hit the roar of time. And yeah, we're done for. Well, maybe second time's the charm. We just gotta hope again that we get that paralysis. Wait, I'm actually curious what happens when we lose. We scurry back to the Pokemon Center. Does that mean Dialga's just gonna be waiting up on Spear Pillar? Like, we didn't finish the cutscene, so I guess you have to either beat or catch it. You can't just lose. That's cool. Oh my gosh, no way! The Hex! It does too much! And... okay... Third time's the charm? Bro, I don't... are you kidding me? Why is there an update happening? Don't tell me they patched the cloning glitch. Bro, I read so many comments saying that this thing is easy to catch in a Pokeball. I don't know what y'all were on. Obviously, this is not going well for me. I'm pretty sure that these legendaries have their usual high catch rate or low catch rate, meaning that they're hard to catch. Unlike in recent Pokemon games where they made the legendary super easy to get, well, you know what? I like timer balls too. I said it earlier. It's fitting with the theme of time going on. But uh, even those aren't necessarily working out. And at this point, I'm like thinking if maybe dust balls might work because we're not really in a cave and it's not nighttime right now, but it does look kind of dark in the sky. So I don't know if maybe, uh... bro, even the timer balls aren't working out. What is this thing's catch rate? Or am I really getting that unlucky? Because I swear I read some comments, like people did not struggle that bad to catch these. So let me know in the comments how many tries it took you to catch the legendaries. Because this is not looking too easy for me. Oh man, I thought giving it the silent treatment might work. I've done everything at this point. I tried praying. I tried... Staying quiet and focus. I tried getting on my knees. I tried. <gasps> oh, all we had to do was just complain. Yes, the ultimate weapon. <laughs> complain and you shall catch the legendary in a timer ball. So not exactly what I wanted, but hey, I'll take it. Dialga, the temporal Pokemon has the power to control time. It appears in Sinnoh region myths as an ancient deity. And now it is under the power of one small child. And you know, I don't usually nickname my legendaries, but I have to for this one. It's gonna be Dio Zawardo. And so we're back in Pokemon Shining Pearl to see how Dawn fares against. I still can't take this seriously, dude. Like Chibi Cyrus is just too funny to take serious. But wow, that looks just as cool as it did before. The little space swirl underneath Palkia is so awesome. Not as awesome as this music though. Yuxi, you're back my friend. Oh, I've missed you so much. And Mesprit too, wow. I cannot believe it. As of, I don't really care about you anymore. And with their powers combined, they will create Captain. Nothing. It just breaks the red chain. I gotta say, I'm not sure which legendary I like more, Palkia or Dialga. I've always been way more partial to Giratina. It's like by far my favorite of this trio. Whoa! <laughs> gotta love that little shock face on our character. But between the main two, Dialga and Palkia, I find it hard to choose. Oh my goodness, okay, this is where Chibi Cyrus actually looks kind of scary. 
But as you can see, it was pretty much the same exact cutscene, and now we have to fight Cyrus, so I'll save us some time and skip straight to the clash with Palkia. And I do believe we're gonna have a different battle background entirely here for Palkia. As you can see, it's more of a swirl into some kind of black hole back there. Not so timey-wimey glitchy, but instead more majestic and... I don't know, spacey? Doesn't really yell space to me, but jeez, those camera angles! That's really cool. Like I said though, I'm wasting no time here. We're going straight for the Master Ball and catching ourselves the deity of space and dimensions, Palkia. No problemo. I should have called it the Majin Ball with the M on its forehead like that. And there it is. The Spatial Pokemon is said to live in a gap in the spatial dimension parallel to ours. Palkia appears in mythology. Oh, does it now? Well, I don't really have a clever nickname as reference to anything for space, really. I guess I keep referencing the hyperbolic chamber, and that's sort of like apart from space and time, so I'll go with Popo. It starts with P, Palkia, Popo. I feel like it kind of fits, although it sounds ridiculous. What the heck? Anyone else see that weird pop-up for a second? Oh my god, their faces! <laughs> Orange, I don't know how you... You are magnificent! Truly incredible! I've lived for 60 long years, but I've never been thrilled like this! Dot is just creaming right now. Oh, that's not appropriate. Since the last time the professor did a lot of research, he became very concerned about you, Orange, so he came out to a place as treacherous as this! Oh, I'm so glad you're safe. Let's go home. No, I ain't ready to go home. What you talking about? There's something we gotta get here on Spirit Pill. What? Are we really going? No one has the right to take away anyone's future or anyone's world. Dang, some deep words from the professor to wrap up this ordeal. And hey, we're still here on Spear Pillar. So before we leave, there is actually a little something you can grab all the way at the back, you will notice there is a Pokeball, and it contains the Adamant Orb, which is of course the item that you can exclusively put on Dialga in order to boost its Dragon and Steel type moves, so very very good specifically on the Legendary. Of course in Shining Pearl you will instead find the Lustrous Orb, I thought it was Luscious, and that'll power up Palkia's Water and Dragon moves, but that's it! We're done here! The legendary battle is over, so it's time to fly on home! I'm sure we can fly from Spear Pillar, right? You can see the bright blue sky behind us, but of course not. I don't know why that's a thing, but yeah, you can't escape Spear Pillar by flying. Thankfully, uh, they made it not so difficult, because we can just use an escape rope once we leave. But uh, first, let's see if the professor's got nothing really that crazy to say. That Pokemon really was extraordinary, wasn't it? Was it really the Pokemon that created Sinnoh? Well, it's complicated. You see, when a mommy Palkia really likes a daddy Dialga, or the other way around, I don't think legendaries really care about gender. But yeah, as soon as you get to this little spot, you can just use an escape rope and ascend to the heavens once again. And that will put us all the way back out and where we entered Mount Coronet, or I guess technically here because this is where we last entered uh, when we got that item. So now we can fly to wherever we want and our next order of business will be the final gym in Sunny Shore City. But I am of course gonna be saving that for the next episode because that was already a lot, dude. Like I can't handle much more than catching the freaking legendaries. Like how epic is that? <laughs> But I'm going to head on over to Salacion Town because I want to test if the cloning glitch has been fixed or not. And I also want to see our new legendary in action as well. Or at least, you know, outside of battle, uh, outside the Pokeball or whatever. So we're going to grab Dio and walk together with our tiny miniature Dialga. <laughs> he's trembling. Oh my god. Must be because he's like paralyzed or whatever. How fast are you though? Oh my god, okay, so you just float? Like, you ain't even gonna try to walk, bro? Well, he does keep up pretty well. Uh, I like that, but, uh, that's an interesting animation you've got there. What the heck? I swear you can make this thing walk somehow. It's just refusing to walk now. Alright. 
Well, uh, let's test this out because as you guys may have seen, there was actually an update for the game literally today as of the time I'm uploading this video. If we register this Burmy and then go into our box list and swap these two around, <gasps> yo, they don't let you swap the boxes from here anymore. Oh my God, they got rid of the cloning glitch. No way, dude. I mean, I guess Master Balls were a little bit, you know, cheap to clone, but things like TMs, considering you only get one of them, like, why, man? That was so fun. I'm sure somehow people will figure out how to still clone Pokemon in some other method and... Yo, Dio, are you coming or what, bro? Okay, there we go. Now let's also show Dialga here outside of battle. Flies a lot more elegantly than Palkia, I would say. Or wait, did I get the names backwards again? Gosh dang it, dude. I don't know why I always get their names wrong. I know Palkia is pink, Dialga is the blue, Dia for diamond, Palkia for pearl, I guess. Or Popo, you know, that fits too. Uh, I guess that's gonna do it for this episode. Got ourselves the legendary, and next time we will be heading off to Shiny Shore City. Smash that like button if you guys enjoyed. And let me know if you struggled as much as I did to catch those, cause, uh, yeah, I think I lost some years off my life. Or maybe it's because it's the Pokemon of time. Either way, have yourselves a damn good day, and I'll catch you in the next episode.